Hey guys, Ty Lord here with the movie and video game pickup video. Physical media all the way here. I got a package from my buddy Mario over at the Retro Wave podcast yet again. This time it's some, some fantastic stuff. He went all out this time. Um, I'll start with that. Then I have some some DVD pickups from uh, Dollar Tree and uh, Mad Monks. Some VHSs too. Uh, we'll start off with a package from uh, El Tiburon. I mean, it was a heavy package. It felt like a little brick. He had it packed nice with, with good stuff. First thing he sent me was a copy of Mortal Kombat 3 for the Sega Genesis. Like this game, uh, I have it on Super Nintendo, but I didn't have it on this. I'm collecting fighting games on all my 16-bit consoles. So I, this was a good one. I think the ports of these are fantastic. Mortal Kombat 3 on Super Nintendo and Genesis. They're very solid uh, arcade ports. I remember not uh, like uh, not pray, uh, not having as much nostalgia for this one as Mortal Kombat 2, but when I put it in and played it, I remember, yeah, I, I do like this game a lot. It has a lot of the uh, it has a lot of the cool scenery and backdrops and a lot of cool characters in it that I that I forgot about from my childhood. So yeah, Mortal Kombat 3, uh, Sega Genesis there. And it, it's in this nice little case. It must just, it kind of reminds me of a VHS tape. I think it's one of those clear plastic uh, uh, protection cases. And uh, then he sent me Riven, a sequel to Myst for the PlayStation. I think that's got to be multiple disc thing. Oh yeah, two disc. Oh, four did? What, four or five? Well, it must be missing someone. Oh, there they are. Disc three. This things hold all kinds of discs. Maybe two is missing. Four or five. Three. One, I could probably find a disc two somewhere. I don't have this game. Anyway, I see one more back there, so I must be missing two. But by Sunsoft and Acclaim and Cyan Productions. I think it's one of those puzzle. Uh, I don't know if this is FMV videos or just stilled image of the background, but uh, like Miss, but. If it's if it's FMV videos, it might be because it's four just long. It might be videos like like D. So I haven't played that game, but I've always been interested in that. So glad to have that. And then speaking of those protective cases, he sent me four more of those. Looks like they're for um, the big box, like Sega CD or uh, Saturn games. So I'll put those to use. Excellent stuff. Then on to the good stuff. He sent some um, VHS tapes. Um, sent me a sealed copy of Return of the Warriors um, Pride Fighting Championships. I used to love Pride Fighting. My dad had some kind of like shady um, satellite box that would get every pay per view for free, and we would watch this stuff. Like, it seemed like it had, there was a Pride event like every couple of weeks on on pay per view. We would watch. Back then, this has Sakuraba versus Hoist, uh, oh, this versus Hinzo Gracie. So I don't think I had this one. Sakuraba versus Hinzo Gracie. It's got Ken Shamrock versus Fujita, Mark Kerr versus Borisov, Igor, uh, Ensign Inoue versus Igor Volchanchkin, uh, uh, Rico Rodriguez versus Giant Ochai. All kinds of uh, Gilbert uh, uh, Eel. How do you say? How did you say his name? I remember that guy. Gilbert Eel versus Gary Goodridge, Vitor Belfort, Ryan Gracie, Guy Metzger, Vanderlei Silva. All kinds of good guy. Uh, great stuff back then. I think UFC bought them out. 
some friends of mine at work were about we bought tickets to see a pride event in las vegas but the ufc bought them out at the time and they canceled the event so i never got to see pride live it was always in japan before and it was fantastic um with ken Sh there's mark kerr and there's ken shamrock there how's he do it ah! that's, that's his wwf uh, style though and then this caged combat here I remember this was another uh, fighting league back in the day. And I think I had this on DVD back in the day. Um, I think I, I'm pretty sure I've seen this before, but I, I, VHS copy there. I think I had it on DVD when DVDs first started out. And then here's the really good stuff he sent me. I don't know if he knew I was a fan of this or not, uh, or he just thought I would be a fan of this and said it to me, because I know I've mentioned this in the group text many times, how much I like it, and it's not available in North America on DVD or, or anything. I don't even know if there's a laser disc of it, but uh, as far as I can tell, it was only released in Europe. And I don't have a region-free uh, DVD player, but he found this on... Uh, VHS Cyber Zone with Mark Singer and Matthias Hughes really cool uh, Fred Olin Ray sci-fi uh, space movie kind of he's like a, a space uh, he's sort of like a bounty hunter type guy he's going after these uh, these cyborg units they're like pleasure cyborg units that have been abducted they're like these really hot women they look like like porn stars or supermodels uh, they're like pleasure robots. They've been, they've been kidnapped by Matthias Hughes um, in this, uh, or he's actually a, a a paid mercenary type guy that kidnapped these these robots. But the plot thickens. Uh, um, Mark Singer goes on a mission to find these these robots. Kind of like a tech noir sci-fi space type movie. It's pretty cool. A pretty funny, entertaining movie. He goes on the mission. His employer sends this girl with him. Then she's kind of like a book nerd. Like she's uh, uh, kind of computer savvy, but not really a fighter or a thug. This guy's kind of like a thuggy uh, a mercenary type guy. So they they kind of, they kind of butt heads. They kind of clash. But she ends up being like a pretty badass too. Like from taking karate lessons on the computer or whatever. <laughs> but. Uh, so they go on this adventure to, to find out these, uh, find these, these pleasure cyborgs. Um, but the plot thickens, you, you find out who the real bad guys are in the whole situation. I, I thought this was a fun movie with old Beastmaster himself, Mr. V, uh, Mark Singer. So I recommend this one. It's on Tubi if you want to watch it. Fred Olin Ray movie. Speaking of Fred Olin Ray, I can't believe he sent me this big box, uh, VHS Commando Squad with old uh, Brian Thompson here. Um, you probably recognize from, uh, he was in Cobra and Lionheart and uh, all kinds of movies you probably wouldn't know if I named them. Um, and and this is sort, sort of like, he's a CIA agent and he's off to stop these drug dealers in South America. I think it's Mexico, yeah. Um, but a group of these agents have already gone there and they've failed and they've been killed and, and he's in the middle of a mission. He's in the middle of trying to figure it out with another girl. And then he ends up getting captured. This other girl, her name is, um, uh, her name is, uh, her name is Kat, I guess. But her, uh, Kathy Shower is the actress, really gorgeous girl. She's kind of like a badass girl. Like she's, the opening scene, she's beating the crap out of people. And she kind of narrates the story, too. Uh, she's trying to find Brian Thompson and get the drug dealers. Meanwhile, it's one of their other agents, played by William Smith, is actually a turncoat, and he's running the whole operation. And uh, Sid Haig is one of the thugs in here. Um, uh, just uh, kind of drags a little bit, but I enjoyed it. Um, they're always getting captured. Uh, Brian Thompson's just captured most of the movie getting tortured. She gets captured all the time. At the end, it pays off. There's a cool action scene at the end of the movie. But, I, you know, wow, 79, 95 when this first came out. Really cool, cool uh, presentation here on the 
on the uh, D, uh, VHS tape, though. I'm happy to have this. So we, I don't know if he realized it, but he sent me two f uh, Fred Olin Ray directed movies. I think he did. Uh, and then, not to be outdone by that form of media, he sent me some books. And I haven't read in a while. Seems like when I do get free time, I got to keep um, uh, keep active because I just fall asleep. But so I haven't been reading a lot lately. Every time I try to read, I'll fall asleep. But there there are some books here I really want to read. He sent me. I don't know about this one. Alan Dean Foster's uh, "Sentence to Prism," a sci-fi um, novel. It sounds pretty good from what I read back here. Um, I don't know if I'll read this or not. Who knows? I might just read this thing. Guys, if anyone knows about that, let me know. Or if there's a film adaptation of it. Here's what I'm really excited about. I didn't have this book uh, in Fleming's On Her Majesty's Secret Service. And I've seen the movie a million times. It's one of my favorite movies. I've only read like three or four Bond novels, so I haven't got up to this one yet. But I might just skip ahead to this one because I hear this one's really good, really close to the film. I hear the film did a good job of uh, adapting this. Like it's the close, the film is the closest to the book than any other one. So I'm really looking forward to reading this one. Uh, it's even got George Lazenby's likeness on on the uh, book here. It's a pretty short book. I could probably t tear through this pretty fast. And then another 007 one. He knows I'm a big 007 uh, fan. John Gardner's uh, Win, Lose, or Die. And this this was the author, I think, that came about after Fleming passed away. I think he writes a lot like in Fleming. Um, so I, I'm kind of interested in reading that one, too. I did not have that one. I'm a Bond collector. So he did good... And then, um, I'll do the VHSs next. He sent me, uh, the Sci-Fi Boys. Looks like it might be a documentary on some sci-fi directors. I see George Lucas has mentioned Spielberg, John Landis, Bradbury, uh, Roger Corman. Yeah, so, uh, one hour of bonus features, too. Uh, about the the men who inspired everyone, all movie makers, all little kids. <laughs> Very cool stuff. And then he sent me. He knows I'm a fan of the Twin Peaks. He sent me Fire Walk with Me, the movie, the, the Twin Peaks movie that was released right after the series. Um, has all the most of the cast from the the uh, television show the. The one girl the actress changed, I forget her name, but all the other actors are in here, and even has David Bowie's in it briefly, and Harry Dean Stanton's in it uh, briefly. I don't think he was in the show. Um, he, he was in the newer season that came out. Uh, and I think David Bowie's character was in the new season, but, but he'd passed away by the time that was filmed. Um, but this was a really trippy movie. It was probably, even for a... a a David Lynch movie. This is trippy and hard to follow. I wouldn't recommend this unless you've seen the TV show first. I don't know. You might be able to watch this without seeing the TV show, but it kind of gives away the the killer of the TV show. Half of this this series was trying to find out who the killer was, and this movie uh, shows that it was, it was released after the the, the TV show, but. Um, Yeah, this one's got most of the cast in there. Uh, David Lynch movie. Even um, um, Kyle MacLachlan's in there briefly. He's not part of the story because this is kind of like a, a prequel. Yeah, it's kind of like showing what how what led up to the murder in, of, uh, of Laura Palmer right here. So she's in it more. She didn't, uh, uh, that character didn't have much many scenes in the show because she was already dead obviously but this one it kind of more follows her but this is a trippy 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 movie I, I recommend you anyone watching twin peaks that's never seen it before and then following it up with this and then following that up with the 2017 uh series but this is this is one of the trippiest movies even weird even surreal for a david lynch movie <laughs> and then the blu-rays he sent me 
Um, Kimbo, Slice, Frank, Murr, Roger, Huerta, Heath, Herring, and Circle of Pain, a fighting movie I haven't seen. So he figured I would like that. Uh, is this even a movie or is it just fighting? I see it has Dean Kane in it, so it must be a movie. We'll have to check that one out. There's old, uh, oh yeah, there is Frank Amir back there. There's a uh, um, Kimbo Slice who passed away, unfortunately. And then The Escape Plan with Stallone and Schwarzenegger, which I've never seen. This movie's probably already, probably already like 10 years old, and I've never seen it, surprisingly. Being a big fan of these two when I was young, I'm surprised I've never seen this uh, prison movie. Yeah, they kind of, I think this is already like 10 years ago, but they're looking kind of like young studs in this movie. They're probably at least 60 by this point. And then another one he sent me, video game movie, and this one's all sealed up. Uncharted with Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg. And I hear everyone trash this, but I've always been interested in watching it because I'm a fan of this game, uh, Uncharted. And it's got Antonio Banderas in it. He pl uh, Antonio Banderas plays the ruthless Moncada. Is that the guy from the, the first game, the bad guy? I can't remember the names. But I, yeah. Uh, so I don't know if that is worth watching or not. Uh, okay, then on to the Dollar Tree pickups. Already... 16 and a half minutes into this thing. Okay. Dollar Tree, all I found was stuff I already had, but I had to pick these up because I'm such a huge fan of the genre. I have Mega Shark 8 movie collection and 4 film shark collection. Uh, this one has Shark Attack 1 through 3 and Shark Zone, which is uh, Shark Attack 4. So all four Shark Attack movies. Um, I didn't have this variant of it, so I don't know if I'll keep this or not. I'd like to give these away to people to watch. What I really like to do is do a kind of like a, a write and review or talk about all these movies with someone. I'm probably PWM will get to it at one point. Um, let me know if anyone's interested in that, watching all of these and, and doing a discussion on them. Anyway, and here's Mega Shark, uh, Mega Shark Movie 8 Collection. That has all the four I just mentioned in there, plus Toxic Shark, Shark in Venice, Malibu Shark Attack, Shark Man, all of which I've seen before except for Toxic Shark. Um, but I've had this one, but I'd like to give someone this uh, that doesn't have uh, I'm pretty sure everyone in my text group has that. I think I just sent one of these to Mark, too. Anyway, there's just shark movies I found. Pretty much the same thing. But I kind of want to go back and watch all those shark attack movies again. Anyway, so on to... Uh, on to my Rasputin's finds. Before I get to those, my last week's find... Uh, dr a dr the Driller Killer. Um... Directed by uh, Abel Fer Ferrara. Um, I, I watched this. I actually watched it on Tubi. Available on Tubi at the gym. Uh, and it was hard to get through my workout watching this thing. Um, I, I was thinking, man, I'm not enjoying this movie at all when I was watching it. It's not a bad made movie. It's very well made uh very low budget though, but set in the big city, like in the 70s, and this guy's a struggling uh, artist, and he lives with this really pretty girl, his girlfriend's super attractive, for, this guy is like a little ratty looking scumbag, uh, kind of think the world owes him everything because he's an artist, and but he can't make any money, and he's renting this apartment, he's supporting this cute girl he's with, not, not really taking her anywhere, just kind of barely can pay rent every month, um, and then her other friend, this other cute blonde girl, is staying with them. And then this uh, this rock band moves in because they can't pay rent. The landlord, he doesn't ever pay his landlord any rent money. So uh, this rock band moves in. And they're always playing rock music, and it's frustrating. This guy, um, what's his name? 
Reno. Reno's the main guy. He's he's trying to do his artwork or whatever. His art dealer or whatever it is, the guy that buys the art from her, from him, like he gives him like five hundred dollars or he gives he pays him for his artwork because the guy's a pretty good artist. It's on display a lot in this movie. The guy the guy's artwork is pretty good, um, but his art I don't know if he's like an art dealer or a, his, somehow the guy that he pays I don't know how that art artsy smartsy stuff works, but the guy he pays. Uh, the guy that pays him to do artwork uh, is this this gay guy, and he doesn't uh, and he doesn't want to pay it, pay him up. Uh, um, sometimes he's he's critical on on the guy's work and doesn't want to pay up or whatever. So this guy's really uh, really struggling. This artist and there's all kinds of homeless around his area, and he's always looking at them. And and uh, there's all these ratty homeless people and. Uh, and his girlfriend's getting to where she doesn't like him and her ex-husband's wanting her to move back and he's actually a guy that's like has actually has money and she's wanting her to go back with him but she's with this this weird artist guy and then the it just drags on as, as, as boring as it sounds me telling you that it's even more boring watching the thing but he's uh he's kind of going mad this this guy Reno and and he keeps looking at the drills at the drill shop and fantasizing about killing people with a drill. And later on that comes to happen. There's some cool, good practical effects towards the, maybe an hour in it starts getting really gory and and, uh, and entertaining. So I would say it was worth watching it. I don't know if I'm gonna keep this or not. This thing's worth a fortune. I got it for 50 cents. Um, so I'm probably gonna give it to one of my friends that'll make use out of it or just sell it and buy some video games. Um, or should I just keep it in my collection because it's such a fine, I don't know. But but it was worth watching. I had good practical effects. He kind of goes on a killing spree. Kills all these poor homeless guys that never did anything to him. I thought he was going to kill... Oh, he killed his his boss, the art guy. Like, he invited him over. Like, he says, oh, bring some wine or whatever. And and you think he's going to seduce this guy. But then he comes in and just drills the hell out of him. And drills him into, the, into a door. And, and he's stuck to the door. And he's killing all these poor homeless people. I was thinking he was going to kill the band that lived with him because they were always irritating him, always playing their music. And it was really bad. Um, but he never killed them. And then at the end, his girlfriend runs... Uh, that they, no one even knows he's the killer. He just goes back to his little boring existence after it, at the, in the daytime. and nighttime, he would kill the guys. He goes back. So no one even knows he's the killer, but the girlfriend just gets totally disgusted with him. Like they order a pizza and he eats all the pieces. It's all disgusting. Like he, there's cheese. There's, there's half of its cheese, half of its cheese and, and peppers or and bell peppers and and he's eating all the ones with just the bell peppers on it. And she gets so disgusted with like I'm leaving him. Like that's the the straw that broke the camel's back. She she leaves to go back to her old husband. And then you see him him her follow him and that kind of leads to the end of the movie. Um, or you see him follow her back to her her old house, her old her old lover. So I don't know if I did the movie any justice or I made it sound good. Like it's a well-made movie. If you're into cult classics, like this is definitely one of them. I was just it was hard for me to get through that that treadmill session watching that at the gym. Okay, so Oh, only video game I found for a dollar ninety-five was Ghost Recon Future Soldier. Does that have cyborgs in it? Oh, these are all good. I don't know if I had this one or not. I hope I didn't have it already. Uh, I don't know. I have much to say about that one. I'm not really into sh uh, first-person shooters, but you just don't see it every day, baby. Ha ha ha! Yeah, baby. Woo! Xbox Three Sixty. Go uh, subscribe to. I was trying to act like Toro Loco. He's got way more energy than I do. Go subscribe to Toro Loco. Um. Yeah, baby. Woo! Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, baby. Woo. Uh. Okay, the movies I got at Rasputin's. I'll start off with the DVDs. I'll end with the VHS tapes. I'm getting turning in with those VHS people. Okay, I'll start off with this one, Undisputed 2. I, I think I mentioned I picked that up the other week, but I watched it. 
It's a sequel to uh, Undisputed with uh, Walter Hill's Undisputed with Ving Rhames and Wesley Snipes, which is, is a fantastic movie. If you haven't seen Undisputed 1, go watch it. It's a fantastic movie. Prison movie, prison boxing movie. This uh, sequel is done by Isaac Florentine, which who I really like as a director. And this is pretty much the same type of movie, only this is set in Russia. Uh, and Michael J. White is the boxing champion that gets framed and sent to prison. And in prison, they conduct these kickboxing matches, and the, Scott Atkins is the champion there. So it's kind of similar movie to uh, Undisputed One, but set in a different country. In some ways, uh, I think I still prefer the first one, but in some ways, this one's better. Like, it has better character development changes. Like, this guy starts off kind of like Ving Rhames, like he's a cocky motherfucker. Uh, he's right in my front. He's all about himself, really self. He did get framed unjustly, but he's really a self-centered conceited guy but he kind of changes th throughout the movie i don't remember there being uh, any changes like that the other one was more plot driven and had really good characters in it though but this guy kind of makes a cool little change in there and you even see like there's depth to the to the guy at the prison champion too i would say the prison champ guy uh his name is um that scott atkins plays boyka He's a really cool character. I think that character goes on to the sequels to be the star, so I got to see those. He's kind of a, a not really a one-dimensional type character either. There's a lot to that guy. Um, but this is all kickboxing matches. So he goes in as a boxer, and so and then he has to like end up learning kickboxing to deal with this guy. Uh, really cool martial arts from from Scott Atkins in here. It was probably one of Scott Atkins' best movies. Um, Probably, I would say this might. Uh, Blood and Bone was my favorite Michael J. White movie, but this might be. Now, this is fantastic. This might be as good as Undisputed One. Really good movie there. Okay, here's one. I can't remember if I already found this one or not, but it was a buck. Existence. Uh, I think Jude Law's in there. And, uh, and what's his name? Sarah Poli and. Who uh, I I remember. Um, oh, this is a David Cronenberg movie. Oh, I, I like this movie. Uh, it came out after Matrix, and it was kind of similar concept as Matrix, kind of a mind screw movie. Really cool. Oh, Willem Dafoe is who I'm thinking about was in it. Uh, Willem Dafoe, really cool, like world within a world, like video game movie, existence, really cool movie. I think it was straight to video, but it was really high quality, and I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, so I remember if I if I uh, had seen this or not, makes the Matrix look like child's play. I don't know about that. Maybe. Um, so I had to get that one. I might rewatch that one. It's been a while since I've seen that, and I enjoyed that. It, it may have been released at the theater. Uh, I just remember it's going straight to video. I got uh, a shark to puss again. I got that for PMM because I already have it. Um, and then here's one. It, this is a uh, I don't really get a lot of chick flicks, but this one here swept from the sea. With Vincent Perez and, and Rachel Wise, who's freaking gorgeous. He's married to, to Daniel Craig. I wonder, uh, and I think see Kathy Bates is in there. Who directs this? Uh, this is kind of like a, from what I've seen, this is like a, a romantic. Oh, it's got Ian McKellen in it. A romantic, directed by Beban Kidron. Looks like like a romantic chick flick type of thing. I'm not really into. Even my wife really isn't into chick flicks. Reason why I got this was it was it was one of John Barry's last movies that he composed the score for. Music by John Barry, 1997. That was towards the end of his career. So, and I think I've listened to the soundtrack before because I'm obsessed with John Barry. So I know I might give this a watch or not. And any movie with John Barry's score moves it up a couple of rankings for me. Uh, here's another, here's what I got for my little girl, or my daughter Sarah's really into My Little Pony, so this is probably on YouTube or whatever, but I got her Twinkle Wish Adventure, My Little Pony, so I, I'm hoping she likes that. I don't know if it's a worthy Christmas present, I might just give it to her before. The, I've really been digging the Universal Soldier movies lately, 
Then I saw this thing, Universal Soldiers. I don't know anything about it, and I don't recognize, uh, I don't recognize any of the names associated with this, so I gotta give it a chance. Uh, genetically modified super soldiers created by the government goes wrong. Unstoppable lab subjects escape from their maximum security holding cells. Sounds like it could be set in the Universal Soldier universe. So I gotta watch that one. And then uh, I found Battle of the Damned with Dolph Lundgren, speaking of the Universal Soldier. And this looks like a, a futuristic um, zombie movie with Dolph Lundgren. So I, I, I figure I better give this one a shot. I haven't seen it yet. Okay, then on to my VHS pickups. I'm turning into these stupid VHS morons that buy VHS and probably go sell them to people who on, on what she, <laughs> I'll turn into those people that sell them on what uh, what not. Like people actually buy this stuff on what not for a lot of money. Uh, so I, I spent 50 cents a piece on these so I might be able to make some movies. But I'm thinking I'm just going to save them for my man cave. I'm going to set up like a video store in there one day. I've been talking about that for years, but but it'll happen. But check this out. I found, for two bucks, I found Rocky 1 through 4. Those are the best ones to me. I need to go on a Rocky marathon and watch all the Creeds, too. Because, it, honestly, it's been so long since I've seen Rocky 1 and 2. Like, I probably don't even remember anything about them. It would be like watching a new movie. So it would probably be really fantastic to watch them now. There's Rocky 1, uh, Rocky 2, Rocky 3, which is still sealed. That's I think that one's my favorite. It's got Mr. T and Hulk Hogan's in it. Here's one I watched the, probably the most when I was a kid. Rocky 4 with Dolph Lundgren yet again. Dolph Lundgren week here. And this one was directed by Stallone. I think I think the all of the all of the ones past the first one he directed, right? Yeah. So glad to have those. I have to keep an eye out for Rocky 5. I found another Dragon Ball movie. I wonder if this is worth anything. Imperfect Cell. Rage Against Time Uncut. Dragon Ball Z. I know the kids at my work are obsessed with Dragon Ball Z. Um, I got Robocop. With Peter Weller, Nancy Allen, uh, all kinds of uh, Dan O'Hurley, Ronnie Cox. Um, I noticed there's a lot of people from Twin Peaks in here. Um, Daniel O'Hurley uh, and uh, what's his name? Uh, Miguel Ferreira and Ray Wise. A lot of guys from Twin Peaks are in this. This is before Twin Peaks. Uh, Miguel Ferreira, yeah. And uh, Ronnie Cox from. Uh, Total Recall, um, Paul uh, Verhoeven directed this. I think he did Total Recall also, didn't he? Okay, yeah, this is a fantastic movie. Probably one of the best action movies. Not really a brainless movie, too. Like this movie makes you think a lot. I've I always appreciated this movie. So I'll probably just keep that in my collection because I didn't have it. Here's a really good one. And I've been looking for this on DVD, but I'm not, I, I haven't found it. Uh, my Science Project from the 80s uh, with, what's his name's in there? John Stockwell. And that little guy, what's his name, is in here. This guy, is his name Fisher or something? Yeah, Fisher Stevens. This is a cool sci-fi movie, like a really funny, like high school sci-fi movie. I put off watching this for many years. Uh, when I saw, I saw it probably when I was, it was in my twenties. Like, wow, I missed out on this thing. This is a fun sci-fi adventure movie. I think Dennis Hopper is in it too. He plays like the the science teacher. Directed by Jonathan R. Betul. Yeah, uh, if you haven't seen this, check it out. My Science Project. It's been a while since I've seen it. I've been looking for it on DVD to watch it again. I'm not putting these things in my VHS player because it might eat them. I haven't tried that thing out in years. And it's one of those units that's on a TV. 
I think it's a Zenith. And then I'll finish it off with another great movie, Trading Places, with um, oh, Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy uh, about the uh, homeless guy trading places with the rich, uh, yuppie guy. Um, really cool. Jamie Lee Curtis is in here with, at her hottest. Uh, I don't know, maybe uh, True Lies is her hottest, but this is definitely up there. Um... Yeah, John Landis directed this too. This is a funny movie. It's been a while since I've seen this. I, I've I watch this every ten years or so. Great, great movie. I don't know if it's my favorite Eddie Murphy, but what's up there? One of my favorite uh, um, Dan Aykroyd movies is a really good one. So I'll finish it off with that. Ooh. So I found some good stuff. I think and a fantastic package from. LT Baron, go check out his podcast, the Retro Wave Podcast. Um, go check out uh, Physical Media Mac over at DVDs Nuts and Popcorn, who inspires me to watch a lot of these movies. And he's starting a, a new gameplay channel, a streaming channel called uh, Physical Media uh, Mac uh, Plays or something, where he just does live stream. I'll try to leave a link down there in the description. A uh, brand new channel. He's playing all kinds of cool 3DO games right now. So come join. I'm usually in the chat with Super Duper Gaming and uh, Crappy Chancellor and Mike Garcia and who else usually pops in there? T-Barone. Oh, what else? Yeah, definitely check out uh, uh, Mario. And Mario has a YouTube channel too now. Uh, El Tiburon, he's been doing pickup videos, so check him out. The guy that sent me this, I forgot to mention. He's been doing more pickup videos. A lot of games and movies and stuff he's been finding. I'll put that in the description. Anything else? Nah, wasn't able to watch as many movies this week. But in enjoyed what I did. So I'll see you guys next week. Have a great uh, Thanksgiving. Bye-bye.